Venerable Sirs, Brothers and Sisters in the Dharma, Suki Hotu. I'm Tingyun from BMSNYS, and I'll be the MC for today's session. Welcome to Exploring Your Reality series, which is organized by BMSNYS with Bhante Nyanda. Today will be our seventh session entitled, Pain is Unavoidable, but Suffering is Always Optional. Just some gentle reminders. Please use your actual name in the Zoom room, and if you face any technical issue, Please let us know via the chat box and our tech team will try to assist you. So without further ado, let's invite Brother Hao to lead us on the requesting for three refuge and five precepts from Bhante Nyanda and followed by a short mindfulness med meditation up to 8.15. After 8.15, we will start our lessons for today. Brother Hao, over to you. Okay, home to brother and sister in the Dharma. Now I will request for three refuges and five precepts. Aham bante hi saranena saha pancha silam dangmang yachami anugaham katawa silam deta me bante sudiyam pi aham bante hi saranena saha pancha silam dangmang yachami anugaham katawa Silam deta me bante satiam bi aham bante hi saranena saha pancha silam dangmang yachami anugaham katawa silam de yamahang wadami tam wadeta ama bante Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. 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 Buddham saranam gachami. Buddham saranam gachami. Dhammam saranam gachami. Dhammam saranam gachami. Sangam saranam gachami. Sangham saranam gachami. Tutiyam pi buddham saranam gachami. Diam pi budang saranam gacchami. Diam pi dhammam saranam gacchami. Diam pi dhammam saranam gacchami. Diam pi sanggam saranam gacchami. Diam pi sanggam saranam gacchami. Diam pi budam saranam gacchami. Satiam pi budang saranam gacchami. Satiam pi dhammam saranam gacchami. Satiam pi dhammam saranam gacchami. Satiam pi sanggam saranam gacchami. Satiam pi sanggam saranam gacchami. Pi saranena gamanang paripunam. Amabante. Pana ti pata veramani sika padang sama diami. Pana ti pata veramani sika padang sama diami. Adina dana veramani sika padang sama diami. Adina dana veramani sika padang sama diami. Kame su mi cha chara veramani sika padang sama diami. Kame su mi cha cha ra ve ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi. Mu sa wa da ve ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi. Mu sa wa da ve ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi. Dura ma ra ya ma ja pa ma da ta na ve ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi. Sura me ra ya ma ja pa ma da ta na ve ra ma ni si ka pa dang sa ma di a mi. Ida me silang asawa kaya wahang hotu. Ida me silang asawa kaya wahang hotu. Ida me silang ni ba na sa pachayo hotu. Ida me silang ni ba na sa pachayo hotu. 
ปิสารณีนาสหปัญชาสีลังดามังสัตุกังกัตตัวอปมาเดนะสัมปาเดตาอมาปันเตสัตุสัตุสัตุโอเค again we will sit quietly for one minute just put your attention on your heart and send our love our support peace to all those who are facing difficulties in this pandemic including ourselves so we we'll just quietly have one minute to send our love peace our support to all those who are facing difficulties in this covid-19 pandemic Next, we will do a meditation, basically going through our five senses to be just aware of what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we feel, what we see, without adding any concept, belief, and judgment. Usually, when we see something, we will immediately have the judgment that oh, this is a cup or whatever this is, or this is what I like or don't like. So, this meditation will guide you through. When you hear something, not add any stories to it. So basically, I call it hearing is just hearing, smelling is just smelling, tasting is just tasting, feeling is just feeling, without adding any concept, beliefs, or story. So basically, what we will go through is to notice with kindness all the physical sensation as they arise in our own unique perceptions. We we'll start by relaxing the whole body, but stay alert and awake. Keep the back straight but comfortable. You can choose to close the eyes or open the eyes or half close. Up to you. Take a deep breath all the way in to the navel to the tan tien. Breathe in with total relaxation. Breathe out, releasing all tension and stress. Breathe in. Feel the presence of the current moment. Breathe out. Release all memories of the past and plans for the future. And we can always come back to them later. Relax your facial muscles. Relax the whole body. Shift your attention to the space within your body. Aware of any discomfort or tension in the body, let go of this discomfort or tension if you can. If not, just accept them as they are. Check into this stillness of awareness. Observe with kind curiosity sensations in the physical body. Explore all physical sensations in the whole body, look and witness. Try to feel your body as if you are feeling it for the first time. Let go of all familiar perceptions, ideas, concepts that you have before. Each of us has a unique, a very unique, special way of perceiving our physical sensation. Just aware of whatever sensations that you can feel without labeling, without judgment, without concept. You can feel the warmth in the body. Feel the subtle contraction of muscles. Feel the upper lips resting on the lower lips, or just feel the weight of the body, the hardness. 
aware of each physical sensation like an explorer feeling for the first time. Or just feel the feeling of being full from eating dinner. Just simply know. Just aware of whatever sensations you can feel on the body. Feeling is just feeling without stories. Let the physical sensations fade away, slowly move to awareness of sound or vibrations. Fully aware of any sound that enters your ear, just aware without labeling, judging, adding extra story to the sound. Fully be aware of just the sound. It could be the background noise of the night, any sound that come in without adding any judgment, labeling, just aware. Hearing is just hearing. Let the sound slowly fade away. Slowly move your awareness to the smell. The smell might be strong, neutral, or undetectable. It is okay. You can be aware of the smell of recently eaten meal the smell of wind blowing in your room or the, just your smell of your own body. Just aware of any smell without labeling, preference, judging, adding extra story to the smell. Fully be with the awareness of the smell. Smelling is just smelling. Let the awareness of smell slowly fade away. Move to the awareness of taste. Pay attention to the sensation in the mouth. Maybe the leftover taste of tea or coffee or any food. Or just feel the warmth of the saliva in as you swallow. Just aware of any taste without labeling. Preference, judging, adding extra story to the taste. Just observe without comparison. Fully be with, fully be with the awareness of the taste. Tasting is just tasting. Let the perception of taste fade into the background and rest in awareness. Now we are ready for the last sense of sight. Before we do that, make the intention that when you open your eyes, try to see everything around you as if you are seeing them for the first time. Release all the familiar perceptions, ideas, concepts that you have about the space around you and its contents and occupants. Release even the image of yourself. 
try to see every texture, shadow, everything as though for the very first time. Now slowly open your eyes, fully see what is around you without labeling, without preference, without judgment, without any extra story. Fully we be with this awareness of seeing. Seeing is just seeing. Gently close your eyes again, rest in awareness for a moment. Explore what helps us to perceive our sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, which is the thoughts. Turn your attention to this thought or mind. You may notice that thoughts arise and fade away. Let the thoughts, thoughts pass through your mind like clouds passing through the sky. Notice without judgment, without attachment, without adding extra story. See each thought as it arises and pass away, aware of the space of the mind. Aware of the space of mind, of the mind and what is happening in it. Let the space of the mind expand and grow. Aware, but don't grasp or hold into anything. Release, let go of all thoughts, just rest in this awareness of awareness. Just stay in this awareness. Like you are aware that you are listening to me, you are aware that you are sitting down. Only human has this unique ability to be aware. Just stay in this awareness for a minute. Just aware of whatever that come, feeling, thoughts. Stay with this awareness. Just feel your body. If you can feel your body, you can slowly open the eyes. Okay, before we start today's topic, a um, few things I want to explain first. First thing is, let's take a moment to make aspiration for Nibbana. We, in order for us to be able to realize Nibbana, which is the ultimate bliss, ultimate happiness, you need to make aspiration. That's why when every time we do good merits, monks always say Nibbana Pachayo Hotu. Without a wish, you cannot direct your merits towards Nibbana. So it is very important to have this wish aspiration for Nibbana. And Nibbana is basically to awaken to the reality of how life works. 
And this is what we are doing in this whole series to explore how life really works so that we can awaken from our misconception about how the reality works. And another thing is make also an aspiration or determination to increase your awareness of your body, feeling and mind starting from today. Like, do you know that you're sitting now? That you're not standing? Do you really know? You might say, oh, I know, I know. But do you really feel it? Do you really experience, know that you are sitting down now? Do you know where you're placing your hands? Do you know what you're feeling now? Confused, bored, or relaxed, and so on. Are you aware of what's your state of the mind, distracted, focused, and so on? One practice you can do to increase this awareness is try to choose an activity a day, like eating lunch or dinner, to be aware of your body and feeling as you are eating. You will definitely be able to feel your food more and be able to taste it more delicious if you able to put your attention awareness on the eating rather than having your mind distracted. So this is the first step. And awareness is not just to be able to know your feeling and thoughts. Actually, it's more than that, but you have to take this first step. When you have this first step, slowly you will be able to use your awareness to see that we don't really experience our body, our feeling and all that. We experience our thinking of the body, feeling and so on. But that's the next step. Now, another thing I want to point out is that what we are doing in this whole series is an exploration series. Exploration means it's a fun way to discover things. And it is what they call a me search instead of a research. In science, it's called a first person introspection instead of a third person experimenting something. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to experiment on ourselves, explore on ourselves. And we are also train our, training ourselves not to fix anything outside. Because throughout this whole series, I keep telling, sharing with you all that all our problems come from misconception of how our life works. Okay? And similarly for this episode also. So what I'm sharing with you is a description of how life really works. Like what we call the physics of life. Like I'm sharing you physics of life like gravity or the reality that all your emotions or without exceptions come from your thoughts. It's a reflection of your thoughts. Your emotions don't come from your situations out there. So this is a reality that I share with you. I call it the physics of life. I'm not sharing with you what you should do in your life. That's the engineering of life. What you should do with your emotion, what you should do with gravity, it's up to you. Once you understand how life works, you can choose what to do with what you know. Like, first, but you have to really know how life works, not through intellectually. Like now you know you're sitting, not by you know, thinking that you're sitting. So once you know how life really works, then you automatically know what you should do. When you know that your emotions come from your thoughts, you can choose to continue having angry thoughts or not. It's up to you. Okay. Now we recap back the episodes that we have gone through. Refresh our mind on the past six episodes. The first episode taught the missing link. Thought is the missing link between your emotions and your experience in life. We experience or feel our thinking of our circumstances in life and not our circumstances in life which means you experience your thinking of what your husband, boss, wife, kids said or do. You never experience what your boss, husband, wife, kids said or did. What you experience is always an interpretation of your life experience. Because, for example, when you see something, it's actually light shines on the object, reflect into your retina. It's actually upside down. And then in your brain, it put right side up again, and then you add stories to that image. So you, you never really experience what you see out there. You experience what you think you see out there. Similarly, hearing and so on. So you can say that 
what your experience is an interpretation of your life experiences. And since your emotion, all your emotions is a reflection of your thoughts, when we change our perceptions and outlook about your experiences in life, your emotion will change. Actually, you can say that you have the incredible gift of the power of thoughts to create what you experience in life, to create the meaning, the interpretation. Everything in our life is created. Everything that we experience in our life is created by us. You might say, you know, but, but, but what about the, you know, the bad guy who always bully me? They, he might do something to you, but your thinking is what you experience. Your thinking is, why, why does he always do that to me? Why does he always say that? Why does he always give me trouble? It's, those are what you experience. So there is no exception. So no buts. Everything that we experience is created in the mind by our thoughts. Okay, this is uh, episode one. Episode two, about natural well-being. I mentioned that underneath the waves of emotions that we have all the time, our anger, sadness, you know, depression, or whatever, or even happiness, at the bottom, there's always this calmness at the bottom of this ocean. And this is our natural being. This is the awareness. Like you can be aware, even when you are sad, or angry, you can be aware of that sadness or anger, which means that you are not that sadness or anger. This awareness is always peaceful and calm at the background. So you can always pay attention to this awareness. And this awareness, or I call it natural well-being, is like the sky and your emotions, including anger, sadness, stress, etc. It's like the clouds in the sky. No matter how many clouds there are in the sky, the sky is always okay. So no matter what happened to you, you have the natural, I call it the natural okayness. Always, you know, always okay no matter what happened. Even you, if you are not okay, you can still have the natural okayness to be okay with the not okay. So, and today we will talk about how to embrace situation, difficult situations so that you are not affected by it. When you are aware that you are depressed, it means that you are not the depression. Like I said just now earlier, you have depressed feelings, depressed thoughts, and so on. Just like now you are aware of the computer or phone in front of you, you are not the computer and phone. So similarly, when you're aware of your anger, depression, stress, whatever, you are not your anger, depression, or stress. This awareness is the part that you can pay attention to. Episode three, we talk about compassion. And according to one famous uh, psychologist, Paul Ekman, compassion is not an emotion. It is an underlying attitude and orientation towards life, which is there all the time. No matter what emotions we have, compassion, like the awareness that I'm talking about, is always at the background. And the, in the discourses by the Buddha, the suttas, it is said that compassion is called a divine abiding, like dwelling in a heavenly state. All emotions are continuous, fleeting, keep changing. One moment we might be afraid, one moment we are not afraid, but compassion is always there at the background. And this Buddhist compassion actually is closer to empathy. Because when you really understand that and feel, not just understand, experience that all beings are interconnected, you feel that whatever other beings go through and you really have this empathetic feeling. To know more about this, if you watch back the talk or the sharing that I give, there's a video that shows about empathy. And that is a very good depiction of what empathy is. Episode four, we talk about what we are. There's an American coach to me summarized quite well. He says, all we are is peace, love, and wisdom, and the power to create the illusion that we are not. And in the text, the Buddha's uh, suttas, there is a line, Pabasara mitam bikawe chitam, tanza ko akantu kehi upakile sehi upakile tantiti. Luminous monks is the, is the mind and is defiled by incoming defilements. So there is this peaceful awareness, which is called the luminous mind. And then there is a the defilements of great hatred delusion. The awareness is inside and there is this outside the greed, hatred, delusion. You can choose to pay attention to this awareness, which is always calm and peaceful, 
or you can choose to pay attention to the good hatred delusion and identify with it. The choice is up to us. You don't have a choice to, for, not, for this great hatred delusion not to appear, but you have the choice to pay attention to this side instead of that side. Okay, episode five, we talk about mental weight. Mental weight means stress, unhappiness, depression, anger, etc. that comes from our overthinking, especially excessive thinking. Like, why does my boss give me so much work and so little time to finish it? Why does he say such hurtful things? Why he treat me badly? Actually, the stress comes from this thinking, not from what the boss said and do. He might say something sort of harsh, but harsh or not harsh, it depends on our interpretation, depends on our thinking. So three things you have to do. First, be aware that stress comes from your own thinking, not from circumstances outside. Second, that we human beings are not built for constant stress. Stress is not good and we work better with stress, uh, without stress. With stress, your sympathetic system is activated. You have more cortisol, and it will give you a lot of problem in your body. Also your parasympathetic system, which is the digestive system, the regenerative system, all will stop. So we are not built for long-term stress. We are only built for maybe 30 minutes of stress or one hour of stress every three, four days to run away from the tiger in the old days. So stress, you have to understand that we are, stress is not good for us, that second point. Third point is you need to have the intention that you don't want to live with the mental weight on you. Because a lot of people think that stress is good, it's a motivating fact factor. Unless you change this attitude, this, you will have stress with you. Okay. Now episode six, we live life according to our thinking. Okay, we'll, I want to show you a picture to show you that... Um, Let's show the cushion picture to show you how the thinking affects, how we live our life affects um, the way, uh, how our thinking affects the way we live our life. Zizhen, can we show the cushion? Okay, the first one. Okay, can you see that the top, I call it cushion or whatever, is darker color than the cushion at the bottom? That means the top one is dark gray, the bottom one may be light gray. Those who can see that, uh, those who agree with me that the top one is darker color, the bottom one is lighter color, please take yes on this poll. Those who think they are the same, then press no. We'll give you one minute to submit. Okay, I just explained. Imagine the background, the top one, okay? And the bottom one also, the background of the cushion represents your past conditioning, your belief, your idea, your opinion, your background. So let's say the blue background represents you know, your sad mood or your preconceived negative thinking. You always think the whole world is negative. It conditions you to see a darker side. You know, then you have this darker cushion. If the background, let's say the green background at the bottom is represents good mood or good positive thinking, then it will condition you to see things lighter. So how your thinking of life will condition how you live your life. If you are always thinking negative, then your, your life will be definitely negative. If you're always thinking positive, your life will be positive. So your life is created by your thinking. But the important thing is, I'm not asking you to think positive, definitely not negative. What I'm trying to tell you, whether positive or negative, it's all an illusion, a story created by our mind. If you can understand it and don't believe all the thoughts as absolute reality, then you are not tricked by your thoughts. Okay, let's see the poll uh, statistic first before we, I give you the answer. Okay, so man, mainly people will be able to see the top one is uh, darker color than the bottom one. Okay, now, uh, Zizhen, can you show the uh, second picture? Second picture, Zizhen. Okay. 
Okay, can you make it bigger, please? Yep, if you put the, your finger in between, you will see that actually both of them are the same color, same shape. Susan, can you color it? Then they can see easier. Uh, what is this? You color it the middle, like what you did just now. Oh, color it. Okay, wait. See, can you see both are the same color? So it, it's a trick of our mind because it's being conditioned by the background. So our background conditions what we see. Yeah, if we have been brainwashed to see that certain type, certain people are bad, then of course we, we would you know, treat those people very badly. So actually we do the best we can given the thinking we have. So even when this was taught to the uh, prisoners, many prisoners cried. They say, you know, if I have known that why I get angry over the person is due to my thinking, it's not really due to the person's behavior, I wouldn't have killed the other person. So it's very important not to trust your thinking 100%. Your thinking is conditioned by your background, your belief, your opinions, and your ideas. Okay, now we go to uh, today's topic. Today's topic, pain is sometimes unavoidable, suffering is optional. I want to show you one um, picture first. Isn't the last, last picture? The one with problem one. Can you please show the, yeah, okay. So if you look at this, you realize that, you know, we worry about a lot of things, but the, the, of all those things that we worry about, it's only a small amount that can happen. And the things that really do happen, it's a job. So actually, a lot of our suffering comes from mental. Yeah, most of the suffering is eliminate, is actually is eliminated if you don't waste time thinking about things that has you know, will never happen and things that possible to happen also is very small. Things that really happen is just one drop. Okay, now we'll continue. Um, one thing I want to stress on today's topic is there is suffering in life, but life is not suffering. Yeah, a lot of Buddhists get it wrong. We think that, you no, know, we always think that life is suffering. That makes it very pessimistic. This is not what the uh, Buddha's intention. So no matter what happened to us in life, we have a choice on how to respond to life. Faced with difficult experience, we can either see it as an incredible learning opportunity or a painful suffering. Okay. So then we don't need the, we don't need the slide anymore. So, um, so very important thing is for us to know that how our attitude towards any circumstances we face will decide whether we suffer or not. And I've read many cases of people who were diagnosed with cancer. Actually, they changed to lead a more meaningful, happy life. Before that, maybe they were too busy with you know, their business, too busy working that they have no time for their family. Once they're diagnosed with a terminal illness, they, they suddenly give up everything and spend more time with, with the family and becomes happier. I'm not saying that terminal illness is good. I'm saying that how we respond to it is very important and that determines whether we suffer or not. So here, pains, when I use the word pain, it refers to unavoidable discomfort, including disease that comes into our lives, such as our illness, our accident that we meet, death of our loved ones, or being with people that we don't like. All this I consider as pain. So all this Pain, which is physical and mental pain, has the potential to cause us suffering or headache. You have no control, I want to stress, you have no control over what situation that comes to us. Sometimes you can avoid, but most of the time you have no control. And when you try to resist it, that's where suffering and pain uh, comes in. Painful situations quite often you know, 
comes once in a while. And in fact, sometimes very negative thoughts also can come by itself. You have no control. What you can control is what is your response to it. And there's always this story in the discourses of the Buddha about two arrows. The first arrow is the pain that you have, either bodily or mental pain, that you have no control, no choice. So if you can accept it, that's the first step, very important. It, it's not, uh, acceptance is not uh, surrender. It's not like, oh, I give up. Acceptance is you understand this is how life works and you embrace it. You accept it, I can say, accept it happily in a sense. The first arrow, you have no choice, so you got to accept it. Second arrow is our mental suffering. Like, why does this happen to me? How come this happened to me? Why it doesn't, you know, maybe it should happen to someone else. That's the second arrow that you can avoid. So remember that. So a lot of our suffering is caused by resisting or fighting what is already there. What's already there, we can't do, so just accept it. And when there's suffering, it's usually a sign of our unwillingness to flow along with life. An example of suffering is spending hours and hours thinking how we should have sold up all our stocks before the stock market collapse or crash, or worrying about that we might get sick before upcoming event, or worrying about our interviews and exams and so on. Those are suffering because it's mental suffering, but it's avoid avoidable. There's nothing wrong to plan ahead. You can plan for your exams or your interview. Plan to prevent problems is okay, but to get stuck regretting the past and worrying about the future, those are a waste of your resources, of your energy. So pain is sometimes unavoidable, sometimes avoidable, but suffering is always optional. If you understand this important reality, actually you don't have to get rid of pain. You just have to change your perspective of life. And the important step to take one of the important steps is acceptance, including radical acceptance. Now we, I'll play you two videos to, to talk about this radical acceptance. Let's return. When we talk about acceptance in the context of mindfulness, what we mean is the need to accept those things that are outside of our control the way that they are in the present moment. This includes external things outside of our control, things going on in the world around us, past events and things that have already happened, other people's actions and behavior. We also need to accept our internal experiences, feelings and emotions, spontaneous thoughts and memories that arise, and certain types of pain and body sensations. It freeze. Sit in. A chance of winning and end up making things even harder on ourselves. And so acceptance is a way of limiting the negative impact or effect of any unpleasant experiences we have that are outside of our control. In an earlier video, we looked at the parable of the two arrows and how the way we react to our negative experiences often ends up making things worse. When touched with a feeling of pain, the untrained person sorrows, grieves and laments, beats their breast and becomes distraught. And so they feel two pains, just as if they were to shoot someone with an arrow and then right afterwards were to shoot them with a second arrow so that they would feel the pain of two arrows. The first arrow causes us pain and the second arrow causes us to suffer. Now that first arrow isn't something we can avoid, but if we can accept the fact that we've been struck by that first arrow, our acceptance acts as a shield that protects us from being hit by that second arrow, and so our acceptance inoculates us from the suffering that that second arrow can cause. And it's important to realize that acceptance is different than resignation. Resignation means giving up. You're resigning yourself to the way things are without any hope that they'll ever be different. You'll tolerate them, but you're not happy about it, and you wish things didn't have to be this way. People resign themselves to all sorts of things, being stuck in a job that they hate, or in an unfulfilling relationship, 
Some people even resign themselves to the fact that they could never be happy again. But acceptance isn't like this. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up. It isn't a loss of hope or resigning yourself to things. Acceptance is simply the willingness to see things the way that they actually are. Whether we're accepting our internal experiences of thoughts, feelings and emotions, and body sensations, or accepting our external experiences and the things going on around us, acceptance is simply an acknowledgement of how things are in this particular moment in time. It says nothing about how things are destined to be in the future, only that this is how things are right now. By accepting things that are outside of our control, we limit the impact they have on us as we experience them only as they are, without making them any stronger or adding any additional layers, as we would if we refused to accept them and tried to fight with them instead. And so, once we learn to accept our experience in the present moment, whatever it is, even if it's something we don't like or that we wished we didn't have to accept, our acceptance of what we can't change, at least not in this moment, tends to make even our unpleasant experiences more manageable, more tolerable, and can often lead them to subside. Now, acceptance, especially... Okay, second video. Now we're going to look at the idea of allowing and letting be and how this can help us practice acceptance. Allowing and letting be simply means allowing whatever we're experiencing right now to be there. No matter what comes up, we simply allow it into our awareness and let it be, however it is. The people who develop mindfulness-based cognitive therapy use the poem The Guest House by the poet Rumi to give an example of the flavor of allowing and letting be. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently swept your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be cleaning you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. And so allowing in and letting be involves taking whatever we're experiencing and inviting it into our awareness. And we invite these things into our awareness even if they're unpleasant and greet them laughingly. And so we're not just tolerating them or resigning ourselves to their presence but inviting them in with a friendliness. And so, by inviting these things in, we can experience them without creating any excess suffering for ourselves, like we would if we tried to slam the door in their face and shut them out, or tolerate their presence begrudgingly. And this is why it's important to cultivate this attitude of acceptance and allowing in and letting be, because if we're unwilling to allow certain things into our awareness, by fighting against them or trying to shut them out, we only give them more power feed them more fuel, making it more likely they set off vicious cycles or pull us into a downward spiral, the consequences of which are much more unpleasant and difficult to recover from than if we just allowed the unpleasant experience into our awareness in the first place. And so allowing these experiences into our awareness and letting them be diminishes the power they have over us, and we're much less likely to be hijacked by them and led down some negative road. And if we do get caught up in some automatic cycle of negative reactions, the best way to pull ourselves out of something like this is to meet it with an attitude of acceptance and allowing in and letting be. And by allowing these unpleasant thoughts and feelings into our awareness and noticing the effect they have in our body and paying attention to these thoughts, feelings, and body sensations, following them in awareness and allowing them to be, we have the chance to see how our experiences aren't static and are constantly changing from moment to moment in quality and content and intensity, coming and going, waxing and waning. And that if we just allow them to run their natural course, they tend to become more manageable, lessen in intensity without us having to do anything about them. 
except notice them, allow them in, accept them, and let them be. Okay. So important point is acceptance is not giving up, is to see things as they are. It means without making them stronger or adding additional layers of stories. It's just like, just see the reality as it is. For example, I always like to use the example that when you have pain on the hand, you can either choose to have this response of my hand is very painful, maybe there's going to be cancer or there is some sharp sensation in the hand. So how you response your situation, you have a choice, but you don't have the choice in terms of the whatever sensations that's happening in your hand. So whatever emotions that come to us, actually when it comes, it's not one of the most of the sufferings that we have is through our emotions, sadness and angles and so on. But those emotions are not really good or bad. Emotions are not really a problem. The problem is your relationship with your emotion, like how you deal with the emotions. If you can accept the emotion, step back and learn to explore it and have curiosity, what does this emotion indicate? Like if you have anger or if you have sadness, what does this indicate? Try to explore with curiosity instead of being afraid of it or trying to suppress it or really fearful of the emotions when you can accept it and explore with curiosity, you will be able to accept it more and you will be able to see that our emotions is not our objective response to what's happening to us. It's our subjective response. It's what we think or perceive is happening to us. It's an interpretation of what we perceive is going on. So you don't have to be afraid that's why there's this saying that you don't have to be afraid of your experience, but if you are afraid, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of your experience because all your experience is a projection of your thoughts. So just like in a dream, your experience is created by your thoughts and you, you are fearful because of fearful thoughts. But I say that you no, know, if you're afraid, it's okay because you didn't know all your experience are projection of your thoughts. Just like in a dream, you didn't know that you that those monsters chasing you is not real. You really think that it's real. So similarly, you don't have to be angry with your experience, but if you're angry, it's okay. You don't have to be angry because all your experience is your thinking of what's happening. It's not really regarding the situation, but if you're angry, it's okay because you didn't know. When you know, you will get up from this anger. So one thing is, the only thing if you can learn is not to be afraid of your emotions or your experience, that alone will change your life. So one thing is very important is try to learn to be friend with your emotions, not to be afraid of your emotions, whether it's anger or whether it is uh, sadness and so on. One way is just stay aware with the emotions. There's one, I watched one uh, YouTube video by one Vajrayana teacher I think he gave a very good example. It's like, let's say this is your emotions, your anger or sadness, and this is your awareness. Just be aware of it, not by ignoring it, turning away, or by suppressing it down. This way, it doesn't, you can't suppress forever. After a while, you get very tired. Not by ignoring, not by suppressing, it's by just being with it. Whether the emotions keep hitting you, you just be there, show your love, embracing attitude for that emotions whatever the emotions might be it might be anger it might be sadness it will keep hitting you but just be there for it just like a mother be there for for the child until there will come a time when these emotions feel that you're always there for it you are not trying to fix it you're not trying to change it you're not trying to lecture it the emotions will open up and then you will be able to be, have peace with the emotions so try to be there with the emotions, to embrace the emotions. Now, um, emotions are useful because it's a good indicator of your mental state. Negative emotions means that definitely you are thinking too much. You don't have to know what you are thinking. Okay? You don't have to check, am I thinking, let's say now I'm angry, am I thinking angry thoughts? You don't have to check. Definitely you are thinking too much. 
And what you have to do is not add more fuel into the thinking. You don't have to try to stop the thinking. Otherwise, stopping it is like trying to suppress it. it. It doesn't work. So it's like when you're driving a car, there's two ways to stop the car. One, by pressing the brake. Another, by not putting your legs on the accelerator. So similarly, if you don't add more thoughts, thoughts are impermanent. It will slowly fade and die down. You don't have to use force to stop the thoughts. It won't work. Suppression, like I showed just now, won't work. One day, these emotions will explode. What you have to do is to be there with it. When you keep hitting you, to be there, be patient with the emotions. Try to explore with curiosity. And uh, in the discourses of the Buddha, it said that actually all our feelings are fabrication. Fabrication means it's made, made by our thoughts. It's a, there's element of intention, element of thoughts in there. So you have to try to see that. Okay, but if you can't see, just don't add more fuse into that thinking. Okay. Um, okay, so now the good news is most since most of our pain in our lives come to mental suffering, the result you know, of trying to fight the pain that we have, we can actually do something about this mental pain. Okay, the best way is to see all this mental suffering as a creation of our powerful creative thoughts. It's like, if you can see that all our suffering comes from these thoughts, then it's like um, seeing that your hand is in the fire. You don't have to know how to bring your hand out from the fire. It's like seeing now you are slapping yourself. You don't have to know how to stop slapping yourself. You will stop by itself. So, the key thing is to see that all your emotions are a reflections of your thoughts. When you can see that, the job is done in a sense. You don't have to do, you don't have to suffer this pain that you have, the unavoidable pain. So this suffering is optional in that sense. And um, one way is to, like, like in the video, is to gently train yourself to accept your pain little by thinking, like I mentioned just now, instead of my hand is very painful, that change the thinking is there's a sharp sensation in the body. Can I be okay with this? You know, when we can avoid or reduce this suffering and we can discern and feel that this suffering, that um, if you can understand that there's just a feeling there by not resisting it, by not adding extra fuel to it, then there will be less suffering for us. So um, what we have to do is pay attention to what's happening instead of adding extra thoughts, adding extra stories to it. This practice will help you clear your space in your hearts and also your you know, thinking and gradually you will be able to calm down. It's not so easy because resistance will come, but through awareness, acceptance, and keep practicing, your old habits of resistance will slowly lessen. And then you have less tension and reaction and less suffering in that sense. This has to do through realization. You have to keep seeing it, keep practical application in your daily life. And this different level of acceptance will keep increasing you'll be able to accept more and more different things in your life. And then this acceptance will allow us to respond things in a very skillful way and not react automatically like what we did in the past. Okay. One way that can help us if you, you need some technique to help us is you can, you know, there are some cars where the seat is facing backwards. Let's say the, the, uh, the car is going this way and you sit facing backwards. So when the car is moving, you are sort of like seeing your, dex, your, your background fading away. So similarly, you can have this visualization on your pain. When you have pain, because pain is not always there. It's there, but not there, there, but not there. So you can see, instead of seeing the pain coming to you as a victim, you see the pain fading away. Just like when the car is moving back and you're fading back, 
uh, the, the scenery in front is you no, know, you are fading away. So similarly, try to see the pain as fading away. And then of course the pain will come again and then see it fading away. When you see yourself not as the pain is not coming to you as a victim, that will change your attitude of suffering also. Okay. So by changing your perception, the, num the amount of pain also will, will change and it will give you confidence to face more pain than you can face last time. So this is the practice of awareness of understanding the pain. You, you learn to understand with curiosity the pain and different when you apply different skills of embracing and acceptance, you will get more skillful in it. When you are able to accept the pain, surprisingly that quite often the pain go away. To share with you a few of my own experience, one time I have a very painful shingles and what I did was I just sit down and tell myself that I will be okay with this pain no matter how long it is. And you have to be very sincere. So I basically tell the pain that I will accept you and you can stay as long as you want. I won't reject you. I won't try to fight with you. And after a while, maybe not long, one hour or so, the pain dissipates by itself. But you can't do that to try to make the pain dissipate. And I never forget one story that Ajahn Brahm shares that one time he was telling his devotee in a Dharma talk that when he was forest, in the forest one time, he had severe toothache. Toothache can be very, very painful. And he walked and do all sorts of things. It's still very painful. He can't you know, try to walk. It becomes running. Try to sit, he can't. Then finally, he just sit down and tell the pain, I will be there forever. You know, I'll allow you to be there forever. I embrace you. And not long after that, the pain disappears. But when he shared that, Few days later, one of the devotees come and complain and says, Ajahn Brahm, I did I have two fake or so and I did the same thing. I keep telling the pain, I will be there, you know, uh, let you to be there forever, you know, even until the end of life, you are there, it's still okay. But after one hour, it's still there. How come the pain is still there? Yeah, you are trying to get rid of the pain, it doesn't work. So one, if you only if you can embrace, really accept with a sincere heart then actually you can make friends with the pain. But if you're, you're not sincere, you're trying to make friends so that the pain go away, so that you, know, you are saying, I will be friend with you, but inside in your mind, it's, please go away, please go away, please go away. It doesn't work that way. So uh, sincerity is very important. And if you don't believe me, try to explore, especially when you have not very painful experience first, like little pain on the hands, experience with little pain, then you have more confidence. The confidence in Buddhism comes from our own experience and realization. It's not through blind faith. Our confidence is like when you see the sky is blue, you know the sky is blue and you're very confident the sky is blue. You don't have to believe anyone. So similarly, try to experiment this in your daily, any pain that you face. Because as we grow older, there'll be more pain and ache. When you can embrace them happily, you will live a much happier life. Embrace them happily, I don't mean don't seek treatment. While waiting for treatment, you can you know, live with the pain as in embrace the pain and be with you. And when your mind is with the pain, actually it will help to heal faster. And also you can detect whatever difficult, whatever disease that is faster also. So uh, very important in this point. Now, Mm. Okay, regarding awareness, mindfulness, just as I say, normally a lot of people think mindfulness awareness is just bear attention to feeling of your body. It's not. You have to actually mindfulness in the Noble Eightfold Path, right mindfulness, come together with the other path. It's not a uh, one after the other. All the Eightfold has to come together. So you have to when you do right mindfulness, you have to keep in mind right view. And what's the right view? You have to be mindful of what is the thought or what is the intention behind your emotions or feeling. Let's say if you have, like again, back to just now, if you have uh, angry feeling, you're mindful of it, but also you have to be mindful that this angry feeling comes from your angry thoughts. 
actually the body also same. You'll be quite surprised that your pain in the body doesn't come from the, the, the signal doesn't come from the body. When there's certain, um, let's say, wound and all that in your body, the hand will send a signal to the brain and the brain will tell you whether it's painful or not. So whether it's painful, it comes from your brain, not from the hand. They have done experiments, with those who have phantom limb, that means their hands or legs are cut, cut off. They can sometimes still feel pain on that phantom limb. It's because it's tricked by the uh, mind or the thoughts. So all your suffering, including the suffering of body pain, comes from your thoughts, your mind. So your right mindfulness have to include this right view to be mindful that all your emotions come from your thoughts. It's a reflection of your thoughts. Mm. Okay. Another way that you can try to solve the other time what I have with my frozen shoulders, I've shared this before on my right hand. This is some time back. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes, okay. Suddenly so drop off the line. So anyway, um, the other example I want to give is the shoulder pain that I have. When there's very painful on one part of the body, you can actually pay attention to the other part of the body that's no pain. That's another way that you can not suffer the pain. So there are many ways that we cannot suffer our pain. So another thing that I want to share here is that um, that the key thing is whatever situation you have is try to drop back to the awareness. There's always this natural peace, calm, harmony, awareness at the background. Try to always drop back to that and not get into, get sucked into the pain. And like I shared just now, the bodies that we have, our body can't tell the difference between a real threat and an imagined threat. For example, is when you watch a movie, a scary movie, your whole body you know, really in a stress response. Or you watch a ghost movie, you're in a stress response. So your body can't tell this is not real. And a lot of our body react to our thoughts. Our thoughts tell us you know, we are in a stressful situation, but actually it might not be. So it's very important for us not to believe, again, not to believe our thoughts. And I want to read to you some statistics a lot of our suffering comes from stress. Stress is overthinking. And according to statistics, 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects from stress. 75% to 90% of all doctors' visits are for stress-related ailments or complaints. So stress also plays an important part in headaches, high blood pressure, heart problems, diabetics, skin conditions, asthma, arthritis, depression, and anxiety. So a lot of problem if you, if you don't solve this stress. The, the, uh, okay, next thing. The important thing is try to look at our thoughts instead of look from them. Okay, I'll explain what I mean. Okay, what I mean is when you look from the thoughts means you believe what is the thought is telling you you are looking at the world from the point of the view of the thought. For example, when we think that Mr. A is angry with us, we will immediately believe that it's true and we start to plan how to deal with Mr. A from this belief. However, the thought that Mr. A is angry with us is only our perception, okay? And for example, let's say we are trying to do something very difficult and we have the thought, oh, this is too hard. I can't do it. Again, this might not be true, but if we believe it, we will give up, which may give rise to the next thought. I'm not much good at anything, which is definitely not true. And then it will give rise to maybe another thought, I'm worthless, which is definitely untrue. So one thought can lead to another, to another, and to maybe depression. And I don't know how they measure in statistics shows that, you know, every day we have like 70,000 to 125,000 thoughts 
every day per day. And 80,000 of them are self-talk. That means we talking to ourselves. And up to 80% of it are all negative. And 90% of our thoughts are all repetitive thoughts. And I know that because I think a lot also. And I also know that a lot of these thoughts are worthless. So try to um, explore. Don't believe me. Try to check. A lot of your thoughts are worthless when you can see that that by realization, then you would spend less time on the thoughts. Okay, a lot of our suffering comes, you think, we think comes from our relationship because we think our anger, our hurtful feelings comes from our relationship with other people. We think that's other, our husband, wife, kids and all that who make us angry, who make us sad, who make us stress and so on. But once you can see, and I keep emphasizing that all your emotions come from your thinking, then we will not project our negative emotions onto other people. And then we will cease having bad relationship. Because if you think that your anger comes from your husband, your wife and all that, then you will be shouting at them. You will throw back this negativity to them and the relationship will deteriorate. But if you can see that your emotions come from your thoughts, then you won't react to them. And then your relationship will be able to grow in peace and love instead of uh, a very difficult relationship. So when, even when we are you know, threatened, when we are angry and so on, we can change our relationship dramatically if we bring awareness. So awareness on what's happening is very important. And we, when you have awareness, you can see that when we argue, actually we are coming from different point of view. Each person of us are unique. We see things differently. When you can see that, then you won't spend so much time in argument. So then can we have the last two picture? So then are you there? Okay, thanks. Yeah. So this Yue uh, Hualiu reminded me uh, yesterday that I showed this before that two person seeing the same thing can have totally different perspective. So everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is perspective, not the truth. One person see which side, definitely you can see C3, the other person C4. And we can argue until you know, the cows come home, you will not get the answer. So basically, we waste a lot of time arguing over things because we see from different perspective because our background, our upbringing and so on. The second, the last picture, same, you know, you just because you are right does not mean I'm wrong because we see life from different sides. So it's if we have this understanding, we will not quarrel so much in our life and we will have much more peaceful and loving relationship with our family members and friends. Okay, we can uh, stop this slide. So it's important to see all our em emotions that we have is neither good or bad. It comes from our judgment only. It comes from our belief, judgment, or opinion. Like the exercise I got you through in the beginning, if you try to see, hear, smell, taste without our judgment, opinion, and belief, we will live a much happier life and much, totally much less suffering. You, you know, all the sufferings we are has created a lot from our judgment, our belief. Mm. Okay. One other thing very important is when we deal with relationship, if you try to make your statements from I instead of you, I'll give you an example, then it will change things. For example, if you say, I feel so angry because you say that instead of you make me angry, it's a big difference. Yeah, when you say, I feel angry because you say that, it's the responsibility is in me. It's, you know, it's, it's my thinking that caused me angry. But if you say, you make me angry, you are putting the blame on that person. So it makes a lot of difference on how you word your, your communication with your loved ones or other people. And anyway, the, the I feel angry because this is what I think you say. It's more accurate. It's because you think he say this thing, then it causes you anger. It's not he makes you angry. 
No one ever make you, no one in this world can make you angry. Only your thoughts can make you angry. So no one in this world can make us suffer. No pain in this world can make us suffer. Only our thinking of the pain, our thinking of the situation make us suffer. I think I will pause here to answer questions so that I know whether you are following or any questions that you have. Is it a question on the chat? Um, okay, there's a question on the chat. I'll try to read out. Good evening, dear Bante. Um, brother, sister, sometimes I driving car alone, feel very boring and sometimes anxious. May I know what can I do and overcome this anxious? Is there any formula to overcome this? Thank you. Mm. There is actually when you are very anxious, very restless, the best formula actually is to pay attention to the breath, just aware of the breath. That's the traditional antidote for it. One way, another way, if you are more sharp, if you have sharp wisdom, is to be aware of this boredom. When you are bored, normally is your mind is moving, your, your mind is moving too fast compared to your body. Your mind is just too much thinking. It's just going very fast in here. So the best way is for you to not continue increasing this thinking. It's not going to help you. You got to stay in this silent awareness. Um, if you have further questions, please let me know. Um, how to read the next one? Uh, Brother Tsun, do you want to unmute yourself and explain your question in details or in summary? Summarize it. Okay, I. Okay, my question is quite long because I put some statement. Okay, I think curiosity is normal, simple, and good word. Because uh, curiosity, uh, I think most of the kids are actually very curious, but because in their process of study, or maybe because the environment, this curiosity actually fed. By, 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 by the cell. Uh, is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's, what's your question? Okay, my question is the problem is most people are not having habit to curious with the cell. So when something not good happens in our life, or most of us all will not go to see inside. Most of us will hate, hurt, hate our cell uh, because for the situation we, we are happening in this situation. So I mean is if you hate yourself, how can you curious with yourself? So is there any advice from Bante perspective for us to not go into this situation? Um, you hate yourself is because, okay, when you hate yourself, okay, try to contemplate which one is you. You hate yourself means there's two you. Try to explore with curiosity, which one is you? You hate yourself. That means there's two persons living in your body. Which one is the real you? There must be a real you, there must be a fake you. So contemplate that and try to, you, you need certain amount of curiosity to, 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 uh, to explore. Anyway, to me, it's very fun. I don't know why, since young, I always feel that the mind is fascinating. Because very interesting, more interesting than anything out there. Because like you hate yourself, that means there's two you. Which one is the real you? One is a ghost. So try try contemplate that the, ne the next time you have this. Okay, Jim Loy, you have a question. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, Bante. Good uh, Bante. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask... Um, uh, you're talking about acceptance and uh, embracement sort of thing. So in, in, in the lay people, like what we do when we're facing, when we're facing pain, right? Either it's emotional or physical, we try to shift our attention to other things. Like so maybe in maybe, maybe if those are not practicing, maybe can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mandy? Can 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 I can hear very clearly. Yeah. So th those are not in the path of practice, they will shift their stress, the their emotions to like drinking, maybe we playing games. When we shift the focus, right, or even uh, in some better forms, they'll be doing 
instead of drinking, playing game, other stuff, something more healthy, be like uh, doing sports. So to shift our, our attentions uh, to, to other things, to, to, to temporarily avoid pain. So this, uh, uh, maybe in some, and maybe those in practice also in other traditions, we will, we will chant mantra when there's a, when it's a change in emotion, we try to chant, chant mantra to shift our focus, to not focus on the, on, on the pain. So, so what's the pro? So what's the benefit of uh, uh, embracing and accepting pains? Outweigh the the by by me shifting my my attention to other to other things. Oh. Do you understand that question? Good question. When you shift your attention, you are not developing your wisdom. But if it's too painful, you have to shift your attention. Actually, I invite you next time you have pain to try to be with the pain. When you be with the pain and can finally accept the pain, you have so much joy. It's like, yes. It's not like that kind of victory joy. It's like you, you suddenly have so much wisdom and understanding that this pain can't hurt me in a sense because it's not an enemy. It's just to, the pain comes. Actually, pain in the body is very useful. It's to tell you that something is wrong in the body. It's not an enemy. So when you can embrace it, not only that you can be with the pain, you don't have to distract it with something else, you will be able to also allow, when your mind is there, it allows it to heal faster. It also allows you to be able to detect if there's really any problem in that area. Or maybe there's some uh, disease that you need to see a doctor. So it's very different. But of course, if you can't, the pain is too painful. There's few ways you can look at a larger area. Let's say the pain is here. You can try to see a bigger area because too painful there. If you still can't, then yeah, you have to distract yourself. But distract yourself, uh, it's not the best way to solve, but it's in the discourses, so it's one of the option. Yes, uh, Bande, uh, just now you're explaining it's on physical pain. What about what about men mental pain? So, so by em embracing our, our stress, our, our, our acknowledging our emotions, instead of shifting shifting our, our stress to, to to do other things to to get away from the stress, what 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 is a wisdom can be built? built oh, okay. A same. Let's say if you are very angry or very stressful or something, you can shift to the awareness of the anger, then you can see that I'm aware of my anger. I'm not my anger. So when you can see that you are aware of anger, you're not ang your anger, then again, anger can come and go and not affect you. Same like the pain. And it's a very powerful uh, realization. You realize that, yes, there's anger, but also you realize that, like I shared just now, anger is like the waves in, on top of the ocean. There's always this awareness, which is the calmness at the bottom. What one uh, American coach shared is, one time he was in a hospital, the, uh, his only daughter was uh, in ICU, and he was very anxious, very stressed. But he realized that in the midst of the stress, he can feel the peace and calmness inside him. There's still this, this stress, but you know that there's always this calmness there. When you know that there is a big security you have, that you know that I'm okay no matter what happened. Makes a lot of difference. And you won't get lost in this. Do, do you? Yeah. Do, do you? Thank you, yeah. Thank you Pandey. I, I think I have further? to experience it because uh, maybe my Kung Fu is not there yet, so I can't experience it. Uh, okay, don't, don't have this thinking. Having this thinking that I, my Kung Fu is not there, it, you, you already blocked yourself, you, you will never be able to experience this if you already shut this down. You have to, I invite you to try. That's why Buddhism is always ehi pasiko. But if you already start with, you know, you need, Buddhism's faith is not blind faith, but you need a little bit of faith to start trying. But if you start with this, uh, my Kung Fu not good enough, I can't do this, then sorry, you will never be able to. I invite you to try it because it's very fascinating to me anyway. The next time you're angry, try to be stay with this awareness. There's anger, there's awareness. You are not the anger. 
And then also when you can stay with awareness, anger is easier to deal with. So I try anger. You will feel that there is burning sensation in the heart. And you will feel that you are burning yourself. Immediately you will stop being angry. Because anger is one of my problems also. And how I solve it is not really solve it as in now if someone says something, I still get angry, but I will immediately feel burning sensation here and I won't continue burning myself. It's like seeing, let's say if you, you see yourself doing this, will you still continue? You won't. You don't even need to, uh, to no, 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 you won't do that anymore. So similarly for anger, it's the same. And you can extrapolate to sadness. You, it's your, your thoughts that creating you the sadness. Anger is like, no, why did he say this? How come he do that? He shouldn't do that. It's those thoughts that make you angry. It's not what the person say. Whatever the person say is already gone, you know, long few hours or days ago. You, do you, do you, do you, do you hear that? I, yeah. I think I, I, I think I grab, I think I grab it, but uh, yeah, I, I need to experiment it on my experiment yeah. on myself. And, yeah, please, please do experiment. Please, uh, not not just uh, please not just target to you to everyone else also. Please don't have this idea that I it's too difficult for me. Uh, only Bante, only a monk like you can do. No, every one of us can uh, can experiment this, and they have share these uh, emotions are reflection of your thoughts to prisoners to criminals, and they also can see. It. So if criminals who can see it, you definitely. Everyone can see. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Yang? Yeah, I'm new. Yeah, Vante. Yeah, um, you know, in the current uh, pandemic, yeah. yes, um, how can we develop this uh, friendly embrace of the virus? Okay. Because um, I, I see that as a bit of a confusion here because if we don't have the fear, you would not go all out, okay, to protect ourselves. So, you know, and, and then you have got this paradox, okay, that, um, you know, you have to do something about it versus, you know, embrace it, you know, rather than, uh, you know, being so fearful about it. So, so I'm, I'm having this uh, kind of very confused, confused, uh, confused um, mind, mind or state of mind with regards to how do we apply this? right okay. uh, to the pandemic or you know the view about the pandemic thank you okay this okay this is a very good question because a lot of people have to me a wrong misunderstanding that fear and stress is useful because it pushes us to do something no when you are in a place of love and peace you will be able to do things much better than from a place of fear it doesn't mean from a peaceful state, you won't get vaccine. I still register for my vaccine, not because of fear, because it's something that you need to protect yourself from and also to save other people. If I, if I get uh, COVID-19 and spread it to other people, I'm harming other people. So my getting of injection is not because I'm fearful that I will die, but it's because it's a necessary thing to do. So you don't need fear to motivate you. To me, you don't need fear... When you need to do something, your intelligence will tell you to do. You don't need fear or stress and so on to motivate you. That's why just now in my sharing, I mentioned that it's very important for us not to think that stress, fear is a useful thing. The, the, if you still think that stress, fear, all that is a useful motivating factor for us to do things, sorry, you forever have this stress and fear because you think it's useful. So you have to change this that from a place of peace and love, when your mind is calm, you can do things better. Not, not from a uh, mind of fear. What do you hear? Yeah, uh, yeah. just, just um, a question here because yes, I can understand that fear is not useful here, right? But then when you are embracing it means, you know, you're embracing it with love. Okay, is that is that correct? I mean, from a place of love means you know, you develop this uh, love of the virus. Or... No, 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 not no. love of the virus. I'm not saying love <laughs> virus. I'm saying embracing all yeah. your emotions, your emotions of fear and all that. Don't suppress it. Don't ignore it. Just be with the fear. Don't don't fight the fear. 
when you be with the fear, you love the fear, then the fear will open up to become love also. Not nothing to do with love the virus. Not not kiss the virus. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But okay. I have okay. heard, yeah. I've actually heard some Mahayana masters yeah. who actually say that we shouldn't kill, we shouldn't fight the virus. Okay. We should actually love the virus. So this is where I'm not too sure whether you actually ties in with what we are talking about no, here. No, no, I'm not As saying you embrace. You know, no, the, no, the no. Virus. When I'm I'm talking about embracing the your fear, your your anger, your sadness and depression, not embrace and kiss the virus, and uh, and have the virus. No, no. Virus is non-living thing, or actually supposedly. So. Yeah, but, but anyway, it's actually it's a uh, it's not living or it's actually a living. Yeah, I think it's a living thing, right? So um, it my understanding of science is it's yeah. not living, but when it goes into your body, then it activates out. That's why it's very difficult to to cure. Yeah, but anyway, even if you want to sacrifice yourself by kissing the virus, it's not good because you are harming other people. Because you are spreading it. Okay. Uh, next. I can't know what's your name. The person who put out their hand, M W. Ah, uh, M W. Do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? One dummy bangte. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. First. Ah, uh, first of all, maybe my English is not so good. No yeah. problem. Yeah. So bangte. Ah, uh, I'm having the chemotherapy treatment. Yeah. As uh, Bante know, of course, uh, this treatment is not very easy for people to face it. Yeah. Uh, the body always feel painful because of the effect of the chemotherapy, right? My question is, when I feel uh, the body painful, uh, is it okay for me? Uh, usually, I put I I what I I I done is two things. Ah, uh. the first is sometimes I turn my mind. Okay, I know this is pain. This is pain. Uh, but this pain is not uh is impermanent, Anita, right? Yeah, and then sometimes uh what helps me is when the pain is already very uh hurtful. So from uh inside of the chest, I try to spread the loving kindness. Uh, is it okay to do that, Dante? Yeah, good. Uh, best is if you can see uh the pain really comes and go, comes and go, Anita. It's a very powerful realization. Also, this for everyone. Also, the next time you have pain, you try to see that the pain is not always there. Pain, no, it's pain, 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 no pain, pain, no pain. After a while, it doesn't affect you so much. You will see, it's pain, no pain, pain, no pain. Another way, of course, you can do uh, spread loving kindness. So yeah, yeah, you're doing. Perfect. For me, uh, when I spread loving kindness, it really helps a lot, Bante. So, uh, meaning that, be, uh, what what I'm asking because last time when I listen to Bante Dharma talk, uh, we try to accept the pain, right? Yeah. But my my question is, if by spreading the loving kindness, uh, does it mean that I try to what we call to suppress or try to ignore the pain, mm -hmm. Bante? Yeah. Loving kindness, you are accepting the pain to me in the sense. Sorry. Okay, you are accepting the pain. Uh -huh. You're accepting oh. the pain with love. So, oh, okay, okay. No so, uh, yeah. So, if these two things what I have been doing, I feel that it it helpful, so I can continue, continue. doing that. Yeah, Bante. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Continue. And then continue with uh, what Bante just now explain. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, continue with what just now Bante uh explain. Try to what we call, uh, yeah, to accept the pain and. Sometimes we think that this is only uh how to say ah uh, only our thinking. Uh yeah, try try this. Try to see that there is pain in the body instead of my body is very painful. I don't get uh what Bante means. Sorry. Okay, there is a difference between my body is very painful and there is. Sensation. There is feeling sharp feeling oh, in my sensation. body in the body. Okay. One is have this eye in there. There is my my body is very painful. Another one is there is feeling in the body. Mm. Okay. 
Oh yeah, Bante, can I further ask? Uh, because of the pain, because it, yeah, our mind is still very, what we call, uh, full of pilesa, yeah. So when the pain is already too painful, sometimes uh, we can have the, our face, uh, like, of course, not can cannot show the happy face, like, try to, how they are, like this, uh, okay. try to, uh, uh, tahan, try to uh, feel, uh, yeah, try to, what we call, uh, try to stand for the pain, or sometimes indirectly, if too painful, uh, can, uh, the, what we call, the, the, the eye, uh, like cry, like cry, but not really cry, uh, the, it's okay. don't, yeah, it's okay. But is, is it okay? Is it, uh, Hilesa or Akusala, that one, Bante? If our our face is when we can we try to stand for the pain. No, like there's no like for that. There's no akusala. No, no akusala. Oh, yeah. And if our our this one, uh, drop uh, I. How, how, how no, no. Don't blame yourself. There's no akusala. There's no unwholesome. Don't blame yourself. Oh, there is. Uh, that that one's still okay because it's the what we call the natural process of the feeling. Yeah, you can't control what happens to you. It's not your fault. Okay. All right. Thank Have you. Have more love for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bante, for the explanation. Okay. Yeah, GK Tan. Hey, hi, Bante. Yeah. You, you mentioned about acceptance. So sometimes when you accept a lot of things as it is, in a corporate world, it can be a challenge because you can't meet a KPI. And you are dealing with a bigger team. You are dealing with a lot of management teams. So, what are your view on that? Thank you. Okay. Uh, acceptance doesn't mean not doing anything. Your interpretation of my acceptance is just sit there and goyang kaki and shake legs and not do anything. No, my acceptance is if you have to meet API, that's the reality. That's the pain I define. You have to see that is the reality. You can't say I. Why do I have to meet the KPI? Now I'm very stressed so I have to meet the KPI. Those are not accepting. So after you have calmed down and accept that, okay, somehow I have to meet this impossible KPI. Now what I need to do, I got to think from a calm mind. So this is what I mean by accepting. Accepting is not doing nothing. So what, what do you hear? You get done? Yeah, yeah I, I think my end is more about the people, the team. So sometimes uh, th there, are, there are people in the team whereby the competency are good. Some people are, need to be improved. So when we tend to accept, okay, these are my team and they can produce this much. So I'm confused with the, in the part like, if I accept, if I don't push further, I might not meet the KPI. So that, that is my point. Uh -huh. Okay. Again, my acceptance, I got to stress, is not about not doing anything. You can push, you can do whatever you want, but my acceptance is, okay, now I am given this team. Okay, let's say I'm given five members, all are hopeless members. So first, if when I say accept means like, okay, I know this is my situation. Not upset means, what the hell? Why come I always get this? How come I always bad karma? That, that is not accepting. Accepting is, okay, now I get these five you know, hopeless people. What should I do now? Okay, I got to think from a calm mind. Maybe I need to go to the management and say, you know, you can't expect me to produce work with these five hopeless people. Or maybe you got to somehow find some way to train them or you got to find some other people. That's what I mean by accepting. Accepting doesn't mean just take the thing. Accepting means you're not fighting what's happening by thinking a lot of thinking in there. So I would like to see what you hear, GK. Okay, thanks so much, Mante. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, I want to repeat for everyone that when I say accepting means you don't have a lot of thinking in there. Like let's say you're being pushed, the boss wants uh, something that can be done in two months you can only, you know, the boss said, I need it in 10 days. Accepting means you don't sit there and say, no, stupid boss, why come he asked me, how can this be done? And that is not accepting. Accepting is, now it's my current situation. 
I have to do it in 10 days. Let me think, sit down in a calm mind. Can I do it in 10 days? Okay, I can't. How many days can I do? You know, how do I deal with the boss? How can I explain to him and so on? That, that is acceptance. Okay, Satima, you have a question. Oh, Bante, actually, um, just now Bante says that uh, bear, I mean, be with the, uh, the painful feeling, right? You reminded me on one event, one, one incident many, many years ago. Yeah, that time I actually I got a dengue fever. And then I don't know. And then what I know is my head is very pain. My eyes is very, very pain. And then um, my body is got very high fever. Then somehow I still go to school and then come back. And then later I read from a book. It says that, yeah, you be with your feeling, be, what, be with whatever, um, be with whatever emotion, uh, emotion you have and then be gentle and soft to it. So I tried that time. And then really, but they, when I try to be with that feeling all the time, actually nighttime, I couldn't sleep on. It's very, 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 very suffering. Even when my eyes want to turn from left to right or also not really can do it. It's very, very painful. But I still don't know that I got dengue. Then I just be with that feeling. Even my friend give me some pill to eat so that I can sleep at night. But eventually it couldn't work. I stay awake. I stay awake and very tired. However, that time I might try to be with that gentle. I, 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 actually, I tell to my feeling, never mind, no matter what, I will be with you. And then until one day, it come to a, a point that suddenly, the mind is so happy, you know, Bante. The pain, all the pain still there. But the mind, it, it itself, so happy. I, I, I don't know why it's, what, why is the ha happiness come from. However, that time, I suddenly, I can know why my eyes become so painful, why my body becomes so painful. The reason of that painful, it come. But now, of course, I, I forgot already. But that time, I was very happy to to exp to have this experience flow and then the book that i read that time is not a buddhism book yeah so yeah, yeah so actually when you can accept but accept doesn't mean not seek treatment no so uh, uh, that that is not a good example actually uh, after the very after the very tough tough situation then uh, my friend say, hey, please go for doctor. Lah. And then that time doctor said, hey, you got dengue, leh. please admit to hospital. But I said, the worst time passed already. Now I'm getting, I develop, it's developing time, so I no need to go to, <laughs> to hospital anymore. <laughs> okay, so, so one thing to remind everyone is acceptance, don't please... No misinterpret me. Acceptance is not like, okay, I accept and I don't go to hospital when I'm sick. You know, I let the, the pain be or you no, know, let whatever happens. No. Until I did it, I don't know. Ah. No, no, it's okay. But what you're sharing is cool. It's like, if we really can, while waiting for treatment, if you can really embrace it, not fight with the pain, you can have this joy. So this is what I'm trying to point to everyone. I'm not saying that don't seek treatment and don't do anything and all that. I'm saying that while waiting for things to be done, you know, while waiting, even when you go to hospital, you can't, the pain can't subside immediately. Try to learn to accept the pain, embrace the pain. You have this enormous joy. And this is the happiness and that all of us are looking for. This happiness comes from partly you're, you're not identifying with my pain. When you're not identifying your pain, you let go of this burden of I then you have this happiness. And this is why Buddha says Nibbana is the ultimate happiness. When you let go of the self, when you really realize non-self, which is actually naturally there. You know, a lot of people think we actually, in the beginning have the self, we need to get rid of the self. No. In the beginning, there's no self, but you think there is a self. But when you have let go of this wrong idea of the self, you have let go of this burden and you have this joy. 
which we are always looking for. So this is why I keep inviting you all. Next time when you have any difficulty, pain, try to stay with the awareness and then you have this joy. Okay, next question. Yeah, so we have a few questions from the chat box. So the first one, we'll start from the top there. It's Bhante, is, the, is that acceptance also applicable to tightness while meditating? Okay, again, I've got to warn. When, let's say you have tightness, okay? I'm not saying that don't, let's say you, your leg very tight, you can move and all that. Acceptance is not like, now I have tightness, I, uh, I got to fight with, accept it. This is not accepting. Accepting, how do you know whether you're accepting or not is whether you're happy or not. If you're very happy and relaxed with the tightness, then you're accepting it. But if you're like this, trying to accept means you are not accepting the tightness. If you can't, then change posture and all that. I always don't agree with fighting to, to keep still. Okay, next. Okay, next it's from Hana. When we sincerely, sincerely accepting the pain, how can we direct our attention? I think you mentioned this just now. Yeah, actually, you basically your attention is on the pain. But if you can't, then you got to take a bigger area. Basically, when you there's a pain, if you can, don't call it a pain. Call it there is sensation in the body. Not my body is painful. You will see that that sensation comes go, comes, go. It's not like this, it's come, go. And then after a while, you're not affected by it anymore when you keep seeing it comes and go, comes and go. Of course, you got to try with, uh, uh, what do you call, not very painful thing first. Then you can you know, slowly graduate to bigger pain. Um, next question. Next is from Fu. So this question is how to accept the pain of having to work in a difficult environment where boss is always scolding and making one feel depressed. Okay. Accepting doesn't mean, again, I have to stress, accepting doesn't mean that I don't do anything. Accepting means first, you got to see that my situation now is in a difficult environment, but your your difficulty don't comes from the boss scolding you. It comes from what you think the boss you you say to you. It's like why the boss say this to me. Why the boss keeps scolding me? That cause you problem, okay, and cause you depression. Now, you got to accept means try to understand this and try to see what situation you are in. Now you're in this situation, then calm your mind down. In a calm mind with a peace and loving mind, you decide what to do. And that's the best decision. You might want to change job or you might want to, I don't know, um, do something else. But if you keep thinking that, I have a friend you know, who actually keep complaining the year before that the boss is out there to, you know, uh, wants to get rid of him. He's trying ways to sack him. He keep having this idea. So keep having argument with the boss. Finally, I keep telling him, don't have this thinking. You know, change your thought, try to cooperate with the boss. And then finally, now he realized that the boss needs him. So it's when you keep thinking that this person is out there to kill you, that person also feel that your, your antagonism, your, your, your hatred against him or her, they will react the same. And then you have more reaction. You, you send out a signal that, you no, know, this is a dangerous tiger. And he will become, he or she will become a tiger. But if you come from love, from peace to that person, then things might change. I won't say immediately change, but at least you have peace and love in you. You don't have this stress in you. So start, start, start from yourself. Okay, next question. Next question is from Ryan. I, he said, uh, anxious is it our mind thinking too much or we have many negative thoughts thought and negative thought is due to relationship. Can we say that? Is yeah, yeah. It, uh, your anxious is too much thoughts. Okay. So the next question is um, from Saul Meili. So may I know the difference between acceptance and acknowledgement? Oh, I think it's just a word. Uh, okay, maybe I know. To me, it depends on what you mean. Okay, my meaning of acceptance is basically to, to be able to 
take the situation rather than in your mind saying, why does this happen to me? How come this happened to me? Opposite of that is the acceptance. You might call it acknowledgement. I, 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 I don't know. Next question. Okay. So the next okay. one is... Uh, Li Hui is saying, uh, people who ask questions. Okay. But I think we have so much time already. Yeah, so we'll try to go through one by one. So how do we deal with those who are close to us when they tend to have a wrong perception of our action? So let's say when we were seen talking to an, with an attractive opposite sex and they start to let their imagination run wild and have wrong perception of things. We can't change other people. We can only change ourselves. If we, if, we, if we have more love and trust to our loved ones, then they will also have more love and trust to us. So you have to change yourself, not try to change other people. The problem with humans is we always want to change our husband, change our wife, change our kids, change everyone else, but we don't want to change this. So it doesn't work. Change this and everything will change. And I think there's this saying, um, when, when you change the way you will things, the things that you will well, when you change the way you see things, the things that you see will change. Okay, uh, next. Next is from Boon Siu. So, Bante, do we put any exceptions when we have the acceptance of the incidents? I, he can always be aware of the emotional when he is calm, but when he's busy, then it, it is hard to be aware of it. So, actually, how to, how to be really... Awareness. How to really be awareness to face or accept our thoughts? Um, okay, no, when I say acceptance is accept your situation, your thoughts, you don't, you don't accept as in dwell in the thoughts. Okay, when you're angry, you don't fight the anger, but you know that the anger comes from angry thoughts and you don't continue with the angry thoughts. You're saying that when it's busy, very hard to be aware. Yeah, so you got to train when you are not busy and then slowly practice when you're busy, also aware. Yes, it's harder, but it's by practice, by training. I think that's all, is it? Um, there's still quite a, quite a few questions here. Yeah. <laughs> the next one is, is in Chinese. So, but his Chiu Rei is asking, so, Oh, you can. Eh, this is uh, something for you to contemplate, to see who is the I. Yeah, you, you, you ask yourself and find the answer. Okay. Okay, so... Two. So, just uh, Tan Ko Ching is referring to the question from MW. So, would chanting the triple gem helps? I think he's referring to the, the pain when doing diagnosis. Yeah. Triple gem, chanting triple gem will help, correct? Okay, so the next question is from Chandima Kang. So how, how do you radiate love and kindness to the pain? Do we radiate when the pain comes? Uh, how do you read loving kindness? Huh? By just reading loving kindness, you feel loved for the, for the whole body, for yourself. I, I'm not sure what you mean. Okay, can we have the next? The next question, it's on, I think I got a direct message from Chan. So he's, he or she is asking, do you have any advice on OCD? So because he needs to wash hands to deal with negative thoughts in his mind. He's married and he thinks sex is dirty and the bed is dirty because of sex. You can see all this is your thinking. It's an illusion created by your thinking. That's, that's the fastest way. How to see it? You've got to keep seeing that what you think is not reality. That's the fastest answer for this. So the next question is, what is the difference between acceptance and allowing? Both, I think, the same. It's a word, Sony. Okay, then next is from... Uh, Pauline is sharing something from Sati Deva. If the problem can be solved, why worry? If the problem cannot be solved, worrying will do you no good. Yeah, actually, you no, know, actually, we worry for nothing. If the problem can be solved, then 
it's not a problem. If the problem cannot be solved, then it's nothing, no, no point worrying about it. The problem is we always worry about you know, wasting our time worrying. Okay. For things to change, I must change first. Yeah, correct. Ante, just now you say accepting with the pain with love. Love from where you mean if we don't have any relationship with love. You are love. Um, we, we are love itself. It's just that we didn't discover. You, you, you yourself, if you, if you go into the silence, into the awareness, you will feel the peace and the love inside you. When you feel the love and peace, you don't have to look for the peace and love outside. But you can you know, have relationship as in to amplify the love in you and amplify the love in the other person. Okay, I think we are quite late. Any last question from the floor before we... I think no more from the, from the chat group. Any question from the one last... One or last, one last question, maybe. Today, a lot of questions. Yeah, Jim Loy. Jim. Jim Loy, can you unmute yourself yeah. and speak up? Can you unmute yourself, Jim? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Pante. Yeah. If just, just like Pante said, if, if our, our experience of reality is all in our thoughts, yep. if our experience of reality is, is all in our thoughts, yeah. So everyone has different perceptions, different different background have have different experience of reality. Yep. As you say. So then then what, what is real? What is the real reality? Ah. Why you um the real reality is everyone living in their own dream. Because we create our reality in our own dream. When you wake up from this fact, then you got enlightened. You are creating your own world, each one. Basically, we are in a dream in that sense. That's why we always say we are, we are in a dream. When you wake up from this, then you get enlightened. So I can't tell you what is the enlightened like because um, the first thing, I'm not there. Second thing is you can't use the dream language to describe enlightenment. We all, I can only use dream language because we are all in our own dream. What, what do you hear? I do, I do. Thank you, Pante. Okay. I think we finish today. We, <laughs> we are a bit late. Share merits or what, MC? Um, okay. Thanks, Pante, for the Q&A session and the lesson. So for now, we would like to seek Continue to guide the dedication of merits. Okay, we just share merits with all devas, dharma protectors, guidance deities, share merits with all sentient beings, share merits with all family members, relative friends, especially departed family members, relative friends, and ancestors. Make aspiration always with the wise, avoid the foolish, be free from great hatred, delusion. At the end, again, share merits with all beings, wishing all beings an equal share of merits. Itawata chamehi sampadang punya sampadang. Sabe dewa numo dantu sabe sampati sitia eta wata chamehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe buta numo dantu sabe sampati sitia eta wata chamehi sampadang punya sampadang sabe sata numo dantu sabe sampati sitia idame nya tinang hotu sukita hontu nya tayo idame nya tinang hotu sukita hontu nya tayo Ida menya tinang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo imina punya kame na mame bala samagamo satang samagamo ho tu ya weni bana patia ida me punyang asawa kaya wahang ho tu ida me punyang ni bana sa pachayo ho tu mama punya bagang sapa satanang pajema te sabe me samam punya bagang laban tu Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu to everyone uh, for attending. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Venerable sirs, brothers and sisters in Dharma, we have now reached the end of the session for today. So please allow me to make some announcements on the on our upcoming events. As most of, most of you guys already know, we have concluded our 13 weeks BFI course last night. And so we'll be starting our new course, which is the awareness of Dharma in daily drama 
on July 2021, every Friday, 8 p.m. So, Brother Zitong, do you want to share the slides of that? Yeah, so this is the one. So if for those who are in the BAY group, we will update you via the WhatsApp group. And those who are interested to join this, feel free to contact us, BMSNYS. So we got another event. So can I pass it to Sister Bihui to make this announcement? Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we just want to uh, share with you uh, one of the initiatives by Bante Mahinda. There's the million minutes of meta and mindfulness. Uh, if you're interested, you can take a look at the website at metaroundtheworld.org. So that there's more information in there. So uh, please also help us to spread the news to, to others. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Bihui, for the update. So for any upcoming BMS and YS event, feel free to follow our Facebook page to get more info. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, Bante. Good night. Thank you, Thank you Bante. Thank you, Bante. Good night. Good night.